were Pyrex frying pans and plastic utensils. All right, plastic utensils. Um, I asked this question approximately 39 years ago, around this time of year, Rosh Chodesh Nisan. I asked this very question of Hagaon Rabbi Shaul Yisrael Yitzhak, of Rosh Yeshiva, one of the Rosh Yeshiva of Merkaz Arav at that time. And he said to me, the truth is there are two kinds of plastic. There are, there are soft plastic and hard plastic. He said hard plastic does not really absorb. Soft plastic probably does. It's a difficult thing to measure, but it probably does. It's logical that it does, whereas really hard, high quality plastic probably doesn't absorb anything very significant. So he said to me as follows, things that, only things that are used with uh, really hot substances, hot foods, uh, with regards to plastic, do you need to have a special set of those utensils for Pesach? Other than that, you can use plastic utensils. If you clean them thoroughly, you can use them uh, the same ones as you use the rest of the year. Things that you use with very hot food, like stirring a pot or what have you, a cooking pot on the, on the fire, then you should have separate, use separate plastic utensils for that. With regards to a frying pan, there are, there are two opinions amongst the Rishonim, whether a, a, a utensil like a frying pan needs, can be ka, made kasher by means of hag'ala, or whether it requires uh, libun. The standard opinion is that it requires libun, which means that you would have to uh, use a blowtorch or something like that, which isn't very practical. I, I tend to follow the view of those Rishonim that Hagala is, is sufficient. If, it's, if you're able to make the frying pan completely clean, then you can, you can make a kasher for Pesach or for whatever all year round by Hagala, by immersing it in boiling water. Uh, and that is possible. To, uh, nowadays, usually in most neighborhoods, there's a place where they do Hagala, etc., etc. So um, that, that's also possible. The third possibility is to have a separate frying pan. Um, is to have a separate frying pan for uh, for Pesach, which is not a terribly difficult thing to do nowadays. Cheap frying pans are are fairly uh, readily available. In some places, if you take a frying pan, a frying pan, and you tell them you want to do hagalano, they tell you you cannot which is true according to some Rishon, even not true according to others, as I explained. So you can uh, try, <laughs> try your luck, see how it goes, goes with that. With regards to Pyrex, Pyrex, in my view, is like glass. This is another question that I asked Hagaon Rabbi Shaul Yisrael Yitzhak 39 years ago. Um, And he said to me, in his words, Pyrex is, is glass, she'avar ibud chimi, that has been chemically treated in a certain way so that uh, it will not uh, shatter, like glass will shatter, so it can resist uh, high, high temperatures, etc., etc. But it has the same halachic status as glass. That's what he said to me, and that is what common sense dictates. If you look at a piece of Pyrex, it looks like a piece of glass. Uh, to tell me that something's absorbed in it uh, is rather strange because then where, where, how can I how come I cannot see it? If there's something absorbed in the glass, I would see it, surely. Now the thing is with Pyrex, sometimes because of the way it's used in ovens and uh, with oil and what have you, certain things can get stuck onto Pyrex and can be fairly difficult to remove. Now, not every single thing that gets stuck, some little spot of something which is usually beyond identification uh, and has been there for some time, you, you cannot always know what it was originally and you cannot always remove it entirely. Although you can, usually you can if you put your mind to it with the right materials and with uh, some uh, steel wool and with some uh, the correct cleaning agents, you can probably remove absolutely everything. So. Either you, either you clean it thoroughly, as I suggest, 
is possible, and then it can be used uh, for Pesach as well, or you can buy a few extra Parex dishes for Pesach if necessary. Thank you, Rabbi Bar Chaim. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. We would also like to suggest the following opportunity to our viewers. If you identify with Rabbi Bar Chaim's message and would like to sponsor or dedicate a video interview with the rabbi in honor or memory of a loved one, if you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Yisrael or invite the rabbi for a speaking engagement, please email us at office at machonchilo.org. If you are inspired by Rabbi Bar Chaim's message and would like to get involved in Torah Eretz Yisrael activities in your local area, please fill out the relevant form by going to the link which appears on the screen.